Today I'm going to be going over some of the basic information about process flow in Flexo. First, we need to know how to create a new process flow. To do that, we're going to start by going to the top bar of FlexSim and selecting the process flow icon. This opens up a drop down menu with five different process flow actions. But for today, we're going to be using add a general process flow. When you click on that, we see that a new panel opens up in FlexSim. It's going to be called the process flow panel. And on the right side, we have our properties. And on the left side, we have the process flow library. This library is full of all the different activities that will be used when building your process flow. Activities are the building blocks of process flow. They represent different actions, events, or decisions that will occur within your process flow. Each activity has its own set of properties that control what will happen when that activity is activated. Similar to coding languages, process flow activities are activated sequentially from top to bottom. The object that activates each activity is known as a token. We can see what a token looks like when we add the source into our model and we skip ahead. It's this little green ball. A token is an object that at its most basic level represents a bundle of data that will be moving through the process flow. But they are often used to represent items flowing through a system, operators, and even processors within a model. When a token enters or flows into an activity, it will activate that activity. This could include waiting a certain amount of time before the token is allowed to exit that, exit that activity, writing data onto the token by adding a label, or even causing an operator in an attached 3D model to load an item. Tokens are generated by using activities, most commonly one of the four token creation activities in your process flow library. And it's important to remember that tokens can only be created while the model is running. Now that we have gone over what activities and tokens are, we can get into actually learning how to build a basic process flow. First, we can add activities by dragging them from the process flow library like this, or by double clicking anywhere in the process flow panel, opening up the quick add library, and then clicking whatever activity we'd like to add it to there. Once we have them into the process flow, we can connect the activities together. One way of doing this is by clicking and dragging the activities together until they snap together into place like this. When two or more activities are put together like this, they are known as an activity block. As I mentioned earlier, activities will be activated from top to bottom, so it is important to make sure that they are placed in the correct order. If you accidentally place an activity in the wrong spot, you can either disconnect the activity using the scissor icons on the left-hand side of the activity block, or by using control click to click and drag the activity out of the activity block, like this. The next way to connect activities is by creating a connector between two activities. This can be done by hovering over the edges of, act of an activity until the chain icon appears, and then clicking and dragging between two activities or activity blocks. Or by clicking on an activity and then clicking and dragging from any one of these white, white circles on the edges of the activity. If you accidentally connect a connector to the wrong activity, you can either delete the connector by clicking on it and then deleting it, or you can remove the connector by clicking and dragging the connector near where it connects to the activity, like that. It's, Im it's important to know that activities generally can only have one connector coming out of them, but that an activity can have multiple connectors flowing into them, like this. The final concept that this video will cover is that of containers. Containers can be found in the process flow library in the display section. When you click on the container activity, you'll see that a whole bunch of options have been are opened up. These can be used to differentiate different tasks or different process flow activities. But for now, we're just going to add a process flow or a basic process container. Activities and activity blocks can be moved into containers like this. And once an activity is inside of a container, whenever you move the container, it will move the activity as well, which is really helpful if you have large groups of activities that you need to move around, but you don't want to drag them one by one like normal. Connections can also be added to and from containers, just like you would add 
connections between activities or activity blocks. And then any activity any activities inside of the container will then receive tokens that flow into the container. You can only have one activity or activity block chain inside of... It's important to remember that you can only have one activity or activity block inside of a container, or else when tokens flow into the container, it'll throw an error because it doesn't know which activity to go to. You can also connect out from containers like this. So if we were to run the model, we can see that tokens flow from our source through the connector into the activities inside of the container before, when they're done, they flow out of the container into the next activity. So now that you have a basic understanding of some of the different concepts and principles within process flow, you're ready to move on and start creating your own.